The Bloemfontein Correctional Contracts is taking the Department of Correctional Services to court. BCC is the company that hired G4S to run operations at the famous Mangaung Correctional Center where convicted rapist Tabo Pesta escaped, or as some say, just walked out. Correctional Services is expected to take over the Mangaung prison on the 1st of August. That's just next week. Well, for the latest on this uh, story, ENC reporter Sindiro Masigane is joining us now in Studio Sli. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome Good afternoon. to today. Thank, uh, thanks for coming in. Now, just explain. Where are we at with this termination mm. of, of this contract uh, regarding the Mangaun prison setup? Yeah. So you would remember back on the 2nd of May, I think it was, uh, we heard from the Justice Minister, uh, Ronald Lamola, telling Parliament that, uh, in essence, there has been a decision that's been taken to terminate the contract um, for the company, of course, that's running the Mangaun Correctional Centre. Now, from what we understand, of course, that the main contractor, BCC, uh, sub contract G4S to be able to run the operations of that particular prison. Now, of course, um, you know, we don't have to take our viewers back to exactly what happened uh, on the 2nd of May, uh, on the 3rd of May, rather, 2022 with Tabo Beska, uh, Tabo Besta, rather, with the help of uh, several other officials managing to, like you say, walk out of the prison. And, of course, this has been not only a huge embarrassment um, for correctional services, but it's an indictment in terms of of uh, the contract that it had with the uh, main contractor to say that, look, um, we gave you this contract to be able to ensure that prisoners uh, don't manage to escape, especially in the manner that Besta did. Um, and the mere fact that this has happened has obviously now put some pressure on government to take some action. That action was to terminate the contract, and they gave BCC 90 days um, to essentially move out. Uh, so it's a 90-day notice period. A 90-day notice period. We're coming right at the end of that 90-day notice period. Obviously, come the 31st of July, uh, BCC and G4S are expected to be out of the Mangung prison, and it will officially be under the control of the Department of Correctional Services. In the interim, DCS has has been running operations. A number of officials have moved in, uh, as well as the manager of, of the prison was replaced because it was found that they had completely lost control um, of operations um, uh, at that particular prison. So we had an opportunity to doorstop the minister um, at a conference today in Kempton Park because I've been hearing over the past couple of days that there is a possibility that the, the termination notice is being challenged and uh, it's Going to be challenged in court. So I've been running around for the past couple of days now, brother, and trying to get anyone to confirm this from the Department of Correctional Services to G4S, um, you know, to anyone who would. Everybody's just, mum. Everybody's mum. Nobody wants to speak to me. So I took the opportunity today to try and get the minister to say something. And indeed, he has confirmed that there is a litigation um, ongoing, and it does seem that the hearing will be tomorrow. And it is with regards to the termination. Um, and some of the legalities around the termination of that contract. Because, Bradan, uh, if you think about it, it's not only an issue around money, but it's an issue around resources. What is going to happen to the staff at the, Chief, at the Mangawung prison? Is DC, DCS going to be compelled to absorb them? Um, will there be a process perhaps to review the contracts and see whether some people are still qualified or fit to be able to be officials at that particular prison? But let's just take a listen. The department is ready, is doing all the necessary consultations with all the stakeholders relevant for the takeover, including organized labor in the space, and to ensure that um, those that have the skills and they have got competency, they will be properly absorbed uh, following procedures in that area of Mangaung. So the department is ready. Uh, when the first day of, um, of, um, of, um, of August comes, the department will be ready. I, I know that uh, there is a process of litigation. Uh, by the Mangaung uh, Management uh, Company, which um, I think will be in court uh, tomorrow. But the department is confident that it will be able to protect its interests and um, uh, take the court um, into its confidence in terms of um, its views and what should be done.
Uh, Lamula, they're expressing a level of confidence about mm. uh, this upcoming matter in court tomorrow. But also good to hear that they are willing to absorb some of the employees following procedures. One would imagine, so. yes. yes, and yeah. one would imagine, uh, Slinde, that will involve some vetting of sorts, mm. especially after what happened in that facility. Absolutely. Yeah. So what about the internal investigation mm. that's been going on? So word around that also quite mum, but then uh, it doesn't seem as though officials want to really get into the nitty gritty around who um, has been suspended at this point if there have been any suspensions at this point all the minister would confirm was that the investigations around the possibility um, of high-ranking officials officials at DCS uh, is ongoing and at this point he just says he welcomes uh, the court processes that have transpired and of course uh, the 12 people that we see in the dock so far let's take a listen uh, those processes are still ongoing I think when a decision has been finalized by the internal processes they will be announced, but we welcome the fact that um, there is an ongoing court processes across the country, and uh, they are there for everyone to see. That is a sign that um, the South African police services uh, working with the department, they've done a great job, and I think um, even the NPA, they are handling the matter very well. So we welcome and we want to say that let the law take its course and let the due processes be followed, and um, I believe that justice will prevail. Okay, now, Slinda, I'm going to do what you did to the minister. You came here to talk <laughs> about the contracts. We've just done yes. that. I'm going to door stop you about the trial itself. <laughs> yes. When is it resuming? What's next yeah. in this trial? And they've been arresting people in drips and drabs. Yeah, I don't know how yeah, many yeah. accused now are in this case. Mm. So, officially, we're looking at 12 people so far who are expected back in the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court on the 8th of August, so about two weeks from now. And, of course, we know they're ranging, uh, they are facing a range of charges from fraud, corruption, aiding and abetting, uh, you know, uh, defeating the ends of justice, uh, you know, and um, most of those who are actually charged at the moment, more than half uh, have been released on bail, all of them 10,000 rand bail. So we have uh, seven of the 12 accused who are out on bail, the, re the rest remain in custody. Uh, and what we are expecting is Besta and Dr. Nandipa to be back in the dock. You would remember that they've been making virtual appearances uh, so far in particular Tabo Besta. Uh, but we also know that Dr. Nandipa hasn't applied for bail as yet. She's been trying to fight for her freedom in higher courts, uh, challenging her the arrest, arrest and, her, and yes, her deportation. Yes, yes. So she seems to be taking a different strategy, a different avenue. That might delay the processes that we see unfolding in the yes. magistrate's court in terms of when the trial uh, can actually begin. And I've also been told that there is a possibility, of course, of more arrests. Okay, we'll wait and see. And when you go down to Mangaung there, please take the warm jacket that you wear. Absolutely. It gets bloody cold. <laughs> very, very bloody cold in Bloemfontein. <laughs> Thank you very much, Estindelo Masigane, for that update on that matter of the Mangaung Correctional Facility and, of course, the Tabo Besta case.